Today I'm going to try to show you a setup, a Celestron setup using the uh, Celestron Nexstar 8SE and some Celestron software called CPMI, I think it is. Yes, yeah, CPMI. Uh, it's some strange, uh, has to do with uh, uh, plain software. It's what the P stands for. I won't get into that. Uh, basically, this to me is brings amateur astronomy into the realm of the professional. Some years ago, uh, I was privileged to be invited to uh, the McDonald Observatory and was given a tour uh, uh, inside a number of the places that the most people don't get to see. And most astronomy today is done automatically. In other words, people use programs like CPMI to guide their telescopes and to, uh, and to do their professional astronomy work. And uh, they sit in a control room. They don't, they don't sit in the, in the uh, dome like uh, Edwin Hubble used to do. They actually sit in a control room and the control room can actually be halfway around the world. So uh, CPMI isn't quite that, but it does give the, the feeling of that kind of thing. So I'm going to try to fire this up and see if, it, uh, if I can make it work. It's been a little while since I've done this. So first thing I'm going to do is down here in the lower left hand corner, I'm going to hit connect and see if it's going to connect with my telescope. And it did. And it says review time and location. Now what I'm going to do is just begin alignment. And the reason is, what I'm doing is a demonstration here. But you do the same thing at night. Uh, unfortunately at night you can't see anything. so. So what I'm going to be doing is showing you the, the basics of this, what it can do. And I'm not going to try to do it in the night sky, but I'm going to simulate the, the process. So the first thing it says is in order to begin the alignment, point your telescope toward the northern horizon and then hit continue. So I'm going to do that. Okay, now I'm going to pause the video for a second here. Uh, and then I'm going to start the alignment process. Okay, I'm back and I'm going to, up here, it says suggested targets. And I'm going to pick a suggested target in the southwestern sky. This is Altair. And I'm going to say Go to Altair. Now, what you may hear is the telescope is actually slewing to Altair, or at least where it thinks Altair is. Okay, now uh, let me pause again. Okay, now the next thing it does is it says, uh, go to Altair, and then you click on Object is Centered. Now obviously what I would do is I would use the centering controls, and by the way, you don't have to go to the telescope to do that. It's right over here in this, uh, this part right here where you can uh, move the telescope with, let me do this a little bit, you can probably hear it. Okay, now it says object is centered. Okay, notice that this first green one turns, or first one turns green. Then I pick another alignment target. And I'm not going to show all of that. I'm just going to go on through this. But you pick a, a, a south, a, a northwestern, a northeast. In other words, four, four quadrants. You pick four stars. So I'm going to pick uh, Deneb. 
and I'm going to go to the nap. Once again, telescope is looking for the nab. Okay, now let me finish up the alignment. I've selected Aldebaran as my third guide star, and it's the telescope is going to that. Okay, now notice that it says I need one more point east of the meridian, so I'm going to pick that. And I'm going to go to Rigel. Then I'm going to, I've got it centered now, or at least I'm simulating I've got it centered. I'm going to say object is centered. Okay, now you notice that it's got all three uh, of, the, of these at the bottom, including, so the first two guide stars, the next two guide stars, and now it says accuracy, good. Eight terms modeled. So then I just click on finish alignment. And it says alignment complete. Okay, now here is what is really neat. Now I can play like I'm a professional astronomer. I'm going to click on Polaris. And it says, down here it offers me the option to go to. So I'm going to do that. And if the alignment is any good, it's going to turn to the left a bit more and eventually it will settle on Polaris. Now that could have been the moon or uh, Jupiter or the Orion Nebula or any object I wanted to point to. It finds it and it uh, and, and everything works. So let me show you the setup that I have here uh, and I'm going to have to take the camera off the tripod for that, so for those of you that don't like shaky videos, you might want to put your hands over your eyes. Obviously, one of the things that I have is a computer, but this is actually a very old Dell Windows XP computer. Now this program I, I've run on Windows 10, so it's not that it, only, that it works only on the old stuff, but, but the fact is it works on all the new stuff and the old stuff, at least back to Windows XP. I've also run it on Windows 7. It works fine there too. So I have a Windows uh, computer. Then over on the right hand side there you see a USB cable that snakes around and goes to a USB hub there. Now I don't need the hub, but uh, I'll tell you why I have that in a minute. I could just plug the USB cable that you see down there on the floor right into the computer, but I chose to do it this way for reasons that I'll explain in a minute. In addition to the, uh, the USB hub that you see down there, I also have a power supply that is driving the Celestron, and it may be hard to see in this bad light, but right here is the cable, and I've shown that, I think, in a previous video. That is just a standard Celestron power supply, which I suggest you might want to get. And then the, the other, uh, the output of that USB is connected up here to the to the bottom of the uh, hand controller. Once you have done that and powered on the telescope, then you simply fire up the software, connect it to your telescope, and assuming that it connects correctly, which uh, I had no trouble with it working on this computer as well as a Windows 10 laptop that you see over there, and a Windows 7 desktop, all of them worked fine, connected, and uh, once again, pardon the, the, uh, <laughs> the, the uh, inducing uh, motion sickness of the video. I, I'm uh, certainly no Cecil B. DeMille, 
So uh, at any rate, that's all you need. USB cable, a computer, and I suggest a power supply, and you can turn your Celestron uh, Nexstar into a remote controlled observatory. Now, why would I want to do that? Well, the truth is, out there, you may notice it's daylight, but out beyond those uh, drapes is a, is a deck that I use for observing. I can put the telescope out there and run these cables back in here. And on the coldest of nights, or the uh, when there's a bunch of people who want to see the same thing, or for whatever reason, I want to show things on the uh, uh, telescope, but I want to show it remotely. I use this program. Now, there is another reason why I have the USB hub, and it has to do with the, uh, the camera, which I'll show you next. This is a camera that Celestron sells. This is the Next Image 5. They also make a Next Image 10, which has a lot more resolution than this one. I haven't yet upgraded to the 10, but uh, if you're interested in the 10 rather than the 5, you might want to go to Slyman the, on YouTube, S-L-Y-M-I-N. He uh, compares the 10 and the 5. At any rate, what this is, let me open the box, set it down over here. Here's the software. And here is the camera, and you'll notice you, you can screw a, uh, an eyepiece holder on there, and then on the other side you have a USB connector. So what, what do you do with that? Well, that is the second thing you plug into this USB uh, hub. So you put the camera in the eyepiece holder, you run the USB cable, to the USB hub, and then you put the whole thing outside. Now what is really neat is there is also software available. In fact, uh, you can uh, you get it with your Nexstar SE that allows you to see what the camera sees. So you can open a second window here. You can use CPMI to guide the scope, and then you can open another window and actually look at what the telescope sees. This makes it very nice when you have a group of people who want to see things, because not only does it let everybody see the same thing at once, but it allows somebody who is trying to guide uh, young minds, let's say, or less, less experienced. Uh, people who want to learn about astronomy around the night sky and show them what they can see. It's a perfect way to do it. I would encourage any of you before you buy anything to consider if you might want to do something like this because I will tell you that this Celestron uh, system and one of the reasons I bought this Celestron is, uh, as many of you know, I've been using that Mead LX10 and I still love it. I think it's a great scope, but it is not a go-to scope. And one of the reasons I bought this was so that I could do things like this program allows me to do. Pick a spot in the sky. Once I've aligned the scope, I can go to that spot from a remote location. In this case, I'm only 15 or 20 feet away from the telescope. But I could be, uh, you know, if you have remote control software on your computer, you could be hundreds of miles away. Also, you can do this over a phone. So uh, I hope this gives you an idea of some of the capabilities of this, uh, this setup. Once again, all you need in addition to the Celestron 8SE is a computer that will run the CPMI software. You download it for free off the Celestron website. And I think it would be good you, if you add a power supply because when you're uh, moving the telescope around a lot at night, that is slewing around in the sky, you'll wear out a pair of batteries pretty fast. 
So at any rate, I hope that this gives you a little bit of an idea of the power of some of these modern programs that are now available to the amateur astronomer. I'm really excited about this. I'm not trying to pitch Celestron's products. I suspect that Mead has very similar things, and I've always been very happy with Mead. In this case, I got a real good deal on that Celestron 8SE. Uh, Amazon was selling it for, I think, $800 before Christmas, and so I grabbed it. And I did it in part because I was aware that this software was available. So, if you're looking for a neat combination, you might want to try this one. But in any case, I do hope that you will get out, look up at the sky, learn the stars, and have fun with astronomy. And most important of all, stay safe and have a nice day.